Hello in this one, combo maximized and critical builds. First, going to start with the maximized build as it is more friendly to new players. A few things to note is that you want to have tier 25 unique gloves called Aquila Claw as they increase combo hitcount by one. At the same time, combo got buffed in season six and even before season six buffs, combo was already really good. It is possible to make combo as big as your screen with weapon range, however, it's gonna require some extra investment, but about that later. Right now, let's head straight into the build. For early skill board on a combo maximized build, this is what you want to have. On the combo itself, it's Warrior Shadow, additional physical damage, confidence, savagery, persistence, and extract earth energy. If you don't have any one of these links, you can switch it for quick attacks, winding wind if you need movement speed. There are a few more choices to do, but this is most optimal ones. On attack enhance, you want to have Fighter's Wrath with increased duration and time acceleration. For defense enhance, Bulwark Protection with the, exactly the same links. For Shadow Provocation, you want to have time acceleration, Hushet Shout, Lingering Shout, and then buff activation when hit, so it would uh, proc automatically. For movement, you can use Leap Attack and Sprint, or you can switch Sprint for Roll. Those, together with Disarm. For Attack Seal, 100% you want to go for Seal of Persistence, this is the best one, this is the only one that works. After that, for Defense and Enhance, you can use anything you want, Seal of Dodge, Seal of Physical, Elemental Domains, or Resistances. And Illusion Axe is in here like a placeholder, but on Illusion Axe you want to have low armor. And you want to link all of these utility skills with Dampen Resource Cost, so it would keep your mana healthy. For Zodiacs on a maximized build, this is what you want to have. First of all, I'm gonna start with non-spec points, Aphros, Forest, Jewel, Prella, Root, Flash, Rainbow. Distorted Senses is a biggest damage node you're gonna have, so pick up this as soon as you can. Breath, Dust, Scent, Artemis, Spider, Maggot, Power of Harmony if your stats are 200 and more, Pharma, Leia is for additional lightning damage, so you could apply Shock, Spike is for potions. And before going into spec points, you need to remember that your first spec opens up at 22 points, so you want to spend your points as soon as you can on your specializations. So, first spec 22, second spec 45, and third spec 70. We are choosing Dawn as our specialization. The only difference you can make, if you don't have convert mana, you can spec into convert mana, and that way you should have enough mana to not run out of it. For second spec, Strike Damage Amp and Sleet. And for the third spec on Sympathy, Strike Damage Amp, Attack Speed Amp, and HP Absorbent Hit. The only thing to note is that if you spec into Convert Mana, you really want this node, otherwise you're gonna die as Convert Mana consumes your health and converts it into mana. Without this, you're gonna start dying, but whenever you have this, Convert Mana becomes really easy to sustain. And then into your HP Amp. For Charm, Blessings, we are looking for Hamal, Boreal, and Castor. These are the three choices that you can do on this specific build. You can always start with your main skill damage type, so you can start always with Hamal, and then into Boreal, as Castor is not as much damage, so leave this one for the last. Charm affixes on a maximized build are these. This is what you're looking for, maximize damage, damage multiplier, and damage when two-handed. I don't have a chance to deal maximize damage, double maximize damage, because whenever you're running band of certainty, this prefix loses a lot of value. So this one is a perfect charm, but if you need some resistances, HPs, or anything else, you can do that too. I'm only showing the, the best you can have. And on legendary, you want to have strike damage amplification. This is the strongest legendary prefix that you can have. For relics, this is what you can do. 
you want to start with caster on caster pick up and hand sanctum effect for a passive for an active you go for sensory simulation together with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect at the same time you have more than one choice for the passive Enhanced Sandum effect increases the buffs on the maps, those are like Swiftness, Enhancement, Fortune, Blessing and so on. But if you don't want that, you can go for Extra Strength, which is either gonna enable you to equip more items, or just gonna give you more HP. Of course you can do Enhanced Shout, but this is not as good as the other two options. For the second one, you can go Spica, pick up Powerful Damage, and for the Active, you can go Pulverize, so the difference between the Caster one and this one is that Pulverize doesn't increase your damage taken. That means it's a more defensive option and it has just a little bit less amp. And on Pulverize you want cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. At the same time on the passive, instead of going powerful damage, you can also go Enhance Earth Energy which increases your max energy count. If you are not capped, this is not a bad option. For the third one, you can go Sabda, just for the Chaos Resistance, you can find some more damage options, but I find this more viable than just a little bit of extra damage. Chaos Resist is always a problem. And for the last one, it's Boreal, with Enhanced HP, as this can only be level 15, and we have no other choices. For itemization on a Maximize build, we are looking for a two-handed sword with a equipped weapon range implicit, and critical rate of 9. We want as low as critical rate as possible because it doesn't work for us and at the same time the lowest critical rate means the highest possible base damage. For the affixes themselves, first of all we are looking for weapon attack damage multiplier, after that maximize damage and for the prefix in a priority order we want to have weapon attack damage flat, then physical damage flat, after that it's up to you. You can pick up on the prefix weapon range or just weapon speed. Both are good depending on what you need the most. And lastly on the suffix you can pick up physical damage multiplier. So this is basically a perfect weapon and the priority order is weapon attack damage multiplier, maximize damage multiplier, weapon attack damage flat. Physical damage flat, and after that, weapon speed or physical damage multipliers or weapon range, whatever you need the most. For a equipment for armor crafting, I'm only gonna show you the most default stuff. So you always want to have main defense multiplier on your items. On the chest, it's on this specific chest, it's armor, but if you're doing dodge, it's gonna be dodge multiplier. After that, some HPs. If you want to make it a little bit more offensive, you can remove one of HP mod and pick up hit rate. On the suffix, it's absolutely up to you, but I recommend to pick up as many resistances as you can and pick up the resistances that you need. On something like gloves, you can craft them more, more offensively. The same on the boots, you can get like melee damage, melee damage multiplier. But on boots, I highly recommend to always craft movement speed first. And if you need more damage, you can always pick up attack speed on your gloves, you can pick up uh, a little bit more damage on your rings, on your necklaces, but this is basically the main idea. For Trima, if you want to have as big range as possible on your combo, you're gonna need a legendary Lacrima with a two-handed weapon, and in that slot, you want to use a water stick. As Watcher Stick scales your weapon range every, every single time on hit up to 10 stacks. So this adds quite a lot of stacks and your combo becomes as big as your screen. But if you don't have this one, any Lacrima is good. This is only explanation of how people achieve insanely big range on their combos. But any Lacrima you have is it defensive? Is it offensive? Use it and try to make the best out of it. For later skill bot, for a maximized build, this is what we're looking for. On combo, you want to awaken it to Origin, Warrior Shadow into Source, Fighting Spirit into Source, Persistence into Origin, Savagery into Origin, Iron Will into Origin, and Smash into Source. You can do some changes 
for Ironville, if you don't have enough HP and you don't have enough strength, you can switch this into melee damage jump. However, remember that for melee damage jump to work, you need to awaken it to origin, otherwise you're not going to be able to apply status effects. At the same time, you can do grip strength. It works really well too. The only downside is that it dampens on hit, your hit rate, so be careful not to lose too much hit rate on this one. For other changes, I also added on Fighter's Rot decreased duration and enhanced effects. Decreased duration is really strong, but be careful. If you're doing it too early, you might lose a little bit of damage. So do the testing in the arena. Totem activation upon using an enhanced skill. I linked it with the weakened totem as it gives the most damage you can have. Awaken it into origin for some extra totem effect. On Shadow Provocation, I added Enhance Effect and Predator's Roar. Those two links are really strong. For movement abilities, I switch Leap Attack into Penetrating Slash as this one has a better animation, fast animation. Shadow of Justice is to remove Crowd Control with buff activation upon Crowd Control, so it would do that automatically. And for Illusion Axe, at this stage, you really want to have low armor as it's gonna increase your damage quite a bit, especially on a single targets. And this is the default later skill board into the game. You can do some more stuff in, the, in here, but I keep this as friendly as possible. For Season 6 Rebirth, you want to have on your combo Extract Earth Energy and Extract Energy. These two links gives you much more damage than any other combination of the links and it's really strong right now in season rebirth as extract energy like energy builds in general were buffed quite a lot for a critical build this is the difference so basically you want to use iron will and melee damage amplification as we can't use extract energy and smash anymore and these two links uh, good options. We still can use Earth Energies as Earth Energies gives us attack damage multiplier and decreases our spell damage and we don't care about spell damage. On the attack seal you can use seal of condensed destruction which is physical damage multiplier but late into the game you really want to switch to seal of striking which is much more damage than condensed destruction if your stats are high enough. For Zordiac changes on the critical build, you want to go onto the rainbow and pick up an elaborate attack. On our second spec, you want to remove Sleet and pick up damage upon attack, as Sleet is going to disable our crit and we don't want that. And in instead of going enhanced potion effect, you can pick up Typhoon and go just for the mighty wind for some extra physical damage flat and chance to deal double maximize damage. Critical build charm affixes are these. We always want to have critical rate multiplier and critical damage multiplier. These are the most important ones. The third one, maximize damage, is basically the best you can have. But remember, you can still pick up damage multipliers or some resistances or HPs, whatever you need. But this is the perfect one. And for the legendary, we want maximization chance. As this one is... With this one, you can start doing a hybrid build build with critical plus maximization and this one scales your damage quite a bit however don't forget that striking damage amp on legendary prefix is also good but maximization chance is the best for a critical build we are looking for a two-handed sword with equip weapon range implicit but in this case we want as high critical rate as possible in this case it's 13 that means we get less attack damage base however Critical is going to make up for it. On affixes, you always want to have gear critical rate multiplier. Without this, critical build is not going to work. After that, weapon attack damage multi, weapon attack damage flat, physical damage flat. And after you have those four mods, should be enough for early game. And if you're looking for more, you can pick up weapon range or weapon speed whatever you need the most, and critical damage multiplier is really nice, especially early into the game when you don't have that much critical damage. For, for other items, for chests, helmets and so on, 
is the same stuff. You craft as much HP and as much defense as you can, and then any resistances that you need. The only difference is that on gloves, you can craft attack critical rate, that's what you want. On the rings, you want attack critical rate crafted, as critical build has more choices than maximized build. So whenever you see attack critical rate, you always want to craft that on your items. Aquila gloves are specific to combo, and it increases combo attack count by one. And these gloves are really huge damage increase, and on this build, you really want to have at least the low tier ones. Higher tier ones, of course, they are much more powerful, but having at least the low tier ones is going to increase your damage by quite a bit. These uniques you basically must have depending on what build you do. So for a maximized build, 100% you want to have Band of Certainty, as this one is going to increase your damage tremendously. And on the critical build, you want to have Caster Refraction, as it gives you flat critical rates. There is another way to make your combo as big as your screen, is to use Piercing Eye Brilliant Crescent. However, this one is not that big on damage part, it's only big on the range. You can, do, you can play with this early into the game, but you're gonna see that crafted two-handers is gonna be so much more damage, that the range this weapon gives you is not as good as anymore, but this is also an option, and you can equip this and use combo. This is everything I wanted to show, don't forget to check the description, as sometimes I leave some new information in here, or just some useful links. If not, you can find me live streaming and ask questions while I'm live, or just ask them on YouTube comments, but either way, GG's, have fun, and see you in the next one.